Okay, what is up everybody? What's happening? Welcome to whatever this is. I can guarantee you that it's gonna be a fun time and I can guarantee you that we're about to discover it together. Uh, for the people who don't know me, my name is Amari. I'm an artist coach, former filmmaker, um, fun times, fun life. And now I help artists, uh, creatives in LA and all around the world. I help them unlock their confidence, unlock their productivity, help them understand their branding, their marketing, everything that relates to leading a productive, sustainable, fulfilling life as a creative. That's what I do now in these fun times. And in that journey, I have really seen the power of what it happens when we bring a lot of us creative people together. I know a lot of times us creative people tend to be in our shit. We tend to be alone. We tend to play lone wolf. And what I've seen, uh, really miraculously is that when you provide an artist and when you provide creatives with support the shit that they can do is like is what we always want to celebrate them for right um and one concept that we're going to talk about tonight is that none of these artists are doing it by themselves uh christoph silver is here and uh if you don't know christoph silver he is an emmy winning producer an international <laughs> international writer producer he uh what was it Screen International listed him as one of the hottest writers, hottest international writers. Um, Sports Illustrated will be doing the same next year. Um, but I'm super excited to have Thanks him better. <laughs> I'm super excited <laughs> to have him on board because um, just to clout him up a little bit, he has produced over 70 Hollywood films and TV shows. He's, his work has been like nominated for the Golden Globes and all that fancy shit. Um, and at the same time, we can recognize that this man is productive. And if he's productive, that means he's navigated these conversations of procrastination before. Um, so I wanted to bring him on board to tell you guys some of his tips and tricks. And I wanted to talk to y'all about some of the tips and tricks that come up with me with some of my clients. And then we're gonna wrap it up with a big old beautiful discussion of exactly what the fuck is the guild. But we'll get to that. I know y'all are probably confused, but we all gonna figure it out together. So. With no further ado, I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to my brother, my man, my favorite producer in Hollywood, Mr. Christoph Silver, to take it away. Hello, everybody. It's good to be with you. Can everybody hear me well? So you're probably going to ask me first question after you heard all these amazing introductions. So you certainly don't have a problem with procrastination, right? And the answer to that may be surprising because I do. I do have a problem with procrastination. And then the next question you might have is, okay, so if you've done like 70 projects that are out there, if you've done all of that stuff in your obviously short life, as young as you look. No, but I mean, like, how did you overcome procrastination, right? Could be the next question. And again, the answer may surprise you. I never did. I never overcame procrastination. I've learned to live with whatever procrastination is because it turns out as I've researched this for my whole life because we all as artists continually go into this writers famously hate nothing more than writing which is a very unique thing about our profession at heart I'll always be a writer I produce I direct but at heart that's what I do I write and writers don't like to write they like everything that comes with the writing they like having written something they we like um, having the result we like the work that goes into it being able to live different lives put ourselves in different experiences and um, all the adventure that comes with it because I always have an excuse to do the craziest shit in my life because oh can I say words like that here um, no but like I, I always have an excuse to, 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 to do the craziest things in my life because I'm it's research hello <laughs> so all of that is what we love about writing but the actual process of it no, I've never met a writer who actually really enjoys the actual process of putting their hands to it in writing. So yes, I've dealt a lot with procrastination. And that is already key to one of the things I'm going to talk to you about. It's not so much to me about fighting something, overcoming something, beating something, all of those things to me, I tried a lot of that. I read every book uh, on procrastination, on productivity. I, 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 I bought a lot of things. I had people advise me. I, I got uh, different strategies on how to schedule properly, on how to do time management, because most of the guides on the topic, when you look up, they always 
tell you how to manage your time better and how to become more effective. I'm sure some of you have seen some of this stuff, yes? And the issue is what I basically found out after a while as I kept living with my issue and learning how to, with my issue, be productive is A, there's no such thing as procrastination. There's just a whole bunch of patterns of behavior that somehow are different for everybody but we call them that because the result is that we delay shit but it's not necessarily always the same thing so i learned to live with that and look a little deeper and the other thing i found out is that all of my research on uh, productivity and time management schedules i could have the greatest schedules i could have the greatest apps on my phone reminding me of stuff and to-do lists uh, scenarios and all kinds of uh, uh, mechanical and technical solutions turns out that none of those are the answers because here's the news productivity solutions do not solve procrastination so I'll repeat that become like solutions on becoming more productive on managing your time better are not going to solve your issue with procrastination how many of you have at some point bought a book about overcoming procrastination or you know the now factor or all that kind of stuff and never finished the book because you procrastinated on the damn book so it doesn't solve the problem because the problem is deeper and again it's not there's no such thing as procrastination you need to go deeper in order to find out what you're actually dealing with I've been working on it for a long time. I'm very passionate in helping people with it because it does cause pain. It causes genuine pain. It does destroy relationships. It does mess up your life. You find yourself on a red carpet in a great moment of your life, but you have some unfinished work in the back, so you're actually not happy while you're you know, having a great time, um, whatever, dating a supermodel and, 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 and catching an award, but you're still stressed out. Um, and I've been there and I don't want that for people. I don't want it for you because great things get to happen and need to happen through all of us. Um, that's why I'm crazy about it and, and crazy about bringing this to you. And since we talked about it, and that's where I found um, a great point with Amari where we both connect is that Amari likes to go deeper with that. I know you have uh, looked into this a lot, brother. And I know that you guys have uh, all hopefully done your homework and gone over this test. So tell me right now, I'm gonna open the floor. Um, Can I speak into that a little bit, Christoph? Yes, absolutely. Cool, so especially for the people who just jumped in, the, the summary of what we're getting at here is that procrastination is not about time management. Uh, for those who know me know I like to read a bunch of like nerdy psychology magazines, but uh, the summary of what I've seen is that uh, it's not a time management problem. It's an emotional management problem. A lot of times what you're doing is procrastinating the emotion that you think is going to be associated with your task. All right. So if I'm afraid or if I'm procrastinating working on an album, uh, it's not that because I don't love music. It's not because I don't know how to organize my time. It's because I'm afraid that people won't like it. I'm afraid of my judgment. I'm afraid of X, Y, Z, blah, 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 blah. So we can't address things that we don't have awareness of. That's essentially what we're trying to get to. So uh, this is the, like Christoph said, the big moment where we identify the procrastinators in the group. So if anybody has done the homework, <laughs> uh, we'll start to talk into that because what the homework was, it was a test, a nine question test that basically says there's three big buckets of uh, why you procrastinate. One is because you're afraid of success. So if I do do this thing and it goes really well, now I'm gonna have extra responsibility. Now I'm gonna have extra people looking at me. Maybe now I can be looking, looked at as a fraud. I know for me, that's a lot of times what I've been putting off. Uh, or you're afraid of failure, which is like common for people. I'm afraid if I fail, then again, I'm a fraud or blah, 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 blah. And then there's also the perfectionism nerd, as we call it in the community. So you feel like things need to be perfect. In my opinion, in my coaching, a lot of times what that basically results to, what that boils down to is insecurity. This needs to be perfect so that when I share it with people, they can then think I'm perfect and that I have no flaws, right? And as we know, as all artists, there's no fucking such thing as perfect. There's no such thing as a perfect work of art, right? So if anybody has um, done the homework, just turn your video on and wave so that we can call on you and have a little discussion. Oh, the first person I saw was Neko. Did I say that right? Nico? Neko? 
I'm sorry. Right. It's Nico. It's okay. What's up? <laughs> Welcome to the party, Nico. Hi, Nico. Hey. <laughs> um, I did do the homework. And I am the one that's uh, the emotional one that's like um, afraid of what everyone thinks about or what they will think about the the music. So I sing. Mm. Um, and so I don't know, like I haven't actually done music in a while. And so now that I'm back into it, it's like, okay, well, I know I'm my best when I write my own stuff but I'm going to allow someone else to write because the procrastination, like, Oh, I don't have time to write. So I'm going to let you write. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then in my head, I'm like, okay, it, it can be better. I don't know. It's just so much that goes into that for me. Okay. Well, I'm gonna let Christoph speak into that, but two things I want to acknowledge you for. First of all, thank you for doing the homework. Second of all, thank you for showing up. Appreciate you. <laughs> um, Christoph, go ahead. I'll let you jump into that. Well, look, we all have a fear of what's possible in our lives because what's possible in our lives is not what we're used to on a daily basis. What we're used to is our, is our status quo, right? Is, is of what we're seeing around us. So, um, and I know you have more on that scientifically later too, Amari, but just, just generally speaking, uh, you know, from, from a point of, of, of emotional status, uh, I get very, we're very good at getting used to stuff as humans because our brain likes to be comfortable, our brain likes routine, our brain likes safety. And so um, understanding your brain is so important with all of these issues. And so when my brain is getting used to me, sort of, I'm just going to generalize it by saying holding myself a little small, and then all of a sudden these big opportunities come my way, there's going to be a fear factor. Um, and because... I am used to being who I am now. I may not always be pleased with where I'm at. I want to be somewhere else. I want to have different kind of social connections. I want, I want to have different achievements or whatever that is. However, what is that going to do to my life as I'm used to it now? Am I ready for these changes? So it's absolutely natural to be nervous about that. And um, the question is really just to how can I take that, or how can you, Nico, take that nervousness or that fear and restructure that through a, through a process of thinking and working on yourself and saying, okay, so what can come in its place? If I, if I go and say, okay, so I'm going to put myself into the possibility and actually think that through and allow myself to experience that a little more, visualize that a little more, um, is it really that scary? Yeah. Yeah, you mind if I jump in, Christoph? Mm -hmm. uh, I love that he brings in the neuroscience into it. Um, something that I was reading the other day was basically summarized as your brain would rather suffer and not do the things that you want to do than change, which sucks. <laughs> it's terrible and it seems very counterintuitive, but your brain would literally rather suffer and go through the pain that it knows rather than the pain that it might happen if I change up. And it seems stupid and it seems counterproductive, but a lot of times our brains are not working in our favor and working in the favor of our visions and our dreams and what have you. Right. So I love what Christoph says is like, once you're aware of that, you can then look back and say like, okay, brain, you think that if I go make this album, it'll be the worst thing ever. And I'll go viral. And everybody will say like, look at this girl who doesn't know how to think, sing. And she thinks she knows how to sing. You can sit with yourself and be like, actually, that's probably not going to happen. I can objectively tell myself that I've got a pretty good voice. Maybe I have an amazing coach named Amari Anderson. Like whatever it is, like I know I have the resources, the support and the talent that will take me to where I need to go, right? A lot of times what your brain is gonna wanna do is say like, yo, if we change anything of our current situation, it's just gonna be doomsday. And it's just like the worst things are gonna happen. And therefore you're gonna procrastinate because your brain is like, okay, cool. Nico, you'd like to be a singer, but why don't we just stay here and do what we're doing? Cause we know what this is. You, sorry, did you say something? You're still on mute. No, I was saying thank you. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah, no sweat. Okay, Go ahead, do Christoph. Somebody else? Do you have somebody else who would like to talk about what their result was from the test? Let me see if I can. Adam see. Davis. I see. Yeah, Adam Davis. Go ahead, brother. Okay, Adam. There you go. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. So um, when I did the exercise, it was very clear to me and I, uh, that I was, um, I was the first to definitely fear of failure um, because, uh, you know, I, I work in a lot of ideas, I have treatment, sizzle reels, style, write a screenplay, 
but I just want, and then I'll just, I'll be satisfied with that. And for me, the fear, the biggest fear is to make something. I mean, it takes a lot of effort. I made short films. I made this to put the two years into a feature, to put a hundred thousand, whatever it takes to raise the money. And then I've seen so many other people that not doing it before. And then that, and then fail. And then, so, so the dreams are so much more valuable to me in my head where I think, oh boy, I'm, I'm really this amazing. I have so many great ideas. I have so many of this, you know, and the fantasy of me being a success is more valuable to me than risking not being that success. So the fear of failure totally stops me every time. Okay, so my first question is going to be what you just said. If that's really true, then don't try. Wait, say that one more time. If what you just said is really the truth, then I would agree and say don't even try. If, if, this, if the fantasy is really more satisfying to you than the doing of it, then why, right. are you here? why are you in this call? Seriously. No, I'm not, what or, I'm saying is you just that, that, that that's like, the that you had. But you no, know, just, no, just I, notice that you're stating yeah. that as your truth. Be careful with what you're saying. I get it, I get it. But, I, but I, in other words, I'm afraid to risk doing something all the way whatever it takes, you know, because it takes a lot of effort to make something happen. It takes a lot of effort to get a film made. It takes a lot of effort to sell a screenplay. Or, and then right. to, um, you know, to just it, it not succeed and not do anything. To, so to, to realize that in actuality, my idea, I, I can't bring my ideas into manifestation and I can't be successful, you know, so it's easier well, to... What I'm going to tell you is, it is uh, the most successful, the most satisfying moment I ever had was not when I won an Emmy or other awards or any other things happened. The most successful moment I've had so far in my career was when someone wrote me a very big check for, for simply me telling them an idea and for spending, I spent 90 minutes in a room with that person and uh, they broke down my idea. It was for a TV series and um, they ended up writing me a $250,000 check um, a few days later. That was the most successful uh, moment in my life creatively and uh, not because of the amount <laughs> I had made good money over many years before that, but because the recognition of that, the fact that all the work that I had done and, and all the things that needed to come together for me to be in that room and have the possibility, the ability to sell that project and, and then show up at the right moment and do it. When my producing partner called me and, and the agent was connected on the phone and I said, this is the offer we got for you three hours after the meeting, I got the offer. I literally stood there at the window looking at boats in Marina del Rey. I'll never forget it. And I had tears in my eyes. And I thought, mm -hmm. hell, this is, this is, this was worth all the fighting. And I'm, I'm telling you, I just, I just want you to get, I just want you to receive this. It's better than any dream. It's better than any dream. <laughs> I'll bet you it is. Yeah. I would love to it. step into that real quick. Yeah. So I love this conversation. Thank you so much, Adam, for bringing this up. Sure. Um, and I also want to I want to step into it also from the lens of a filmmaker, because I think what we do is also very specific in that it takes a lot. Right. Like you have the pre-production process, you have the production process, you have the post-production, you have the whole marketing. Like there's a lot that goes into it rather than saying, like, hey, I want to go make a song. Right. Of course, there's a lot right. that goes into a song, but like a film can be like a y multiple years long process. Right. And I think sometimes why we as filmmakers procrastinate so much is because we look at this big thing that we're trying to create that could be years down the future and that can trigger this idea of fear of failure like oh my god what if i put in three years four years of work and then it all comes to nothing right so what i found to be so yeah. useful in that is instead of looking at this big thing instead of looking at myself at the oscars what i'm trying to look at right here is i'm trying to finish this scene that i'm working on like, this is my fucking baby. This little seven page scene that I'm working on right here, this is my accomplishment for the day. This is my, like you're saying, the fantasy that I'm going to realize. It's not this big film that I'm working on three years down the road, but if you just, a concept I keep talking about lately is like, if you just focus on the slice of pizza that you're working on, you work on one slice of pizza this day, next slice of pizza this day, then you're gonna look up at the end of the week and you finish the whole pizza, right? But if on the first day you're looking at, oh my God, I have to eat a whole pizza, you're like, my stomach all of a sudden feels smaller and I feel like I'm not that hungry. You know what I'm saying? Um, for yeah. the people who, who are new to me, I use very weird metaphors, but you, you see what I'm saying? It's like, if you sure. focus on the big end goal all the time, so much easier to procrastinate because your brain is like, right. you, you want me to give you energy for this thing that's going to happen way out in the future? Mm -hmm. Rather than like, hey brain, we're going to focus for the next seven hours and we're going to knock the hell out of these three pages 
do that every right. day and all of a sudden we have a different reality that we're living in but again but that's more like, like i get that but now if you if we're going to use that questionnaire as a, a resource there are three there are basically three major obstacles that are are causing us to put things off fear of failure fear of success and what that portends and what that brings and yeah. The other one is is fear of not being perfect. I think it was fear of perfectionism or, or not it being very imperfect. Trying to chase perfectionism, yeah. <laughs> right. So it seems like the strategies for for um, conquering each of those would be different. Yes, yes. And I think the first step is kind of like what we're talking about on the call is first you have to be aware of which one you're coming from, right? right. Like, and then you can employ the different strategies and whatever. Mm -hmm. But we'll get into that. But I like that you say that, right? Okay. No, and, and, and I, yeah, like, yeah. Mary, I like that you're, that you're putting it into perspective because again, it's okay for our brain not to want to go into the big super mega dream. It's okay for our brain to, to, right. to panic. Those are normal things that we have. Those are evolutionary sure. things that, that actually make a lot of sense. If I can show you this for a minute. This is your comfort zone right here, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. like this box is your comfort zone. And there is an area around this comfort zone that I call your stretch zone. I don't know if you've seen any of this before. Sure. Anything that's, so the stretch zone is what Amari's talking about. Right here, just slightly out of the comfort zone is writing the first couple of pages, you know? And then, you know, writing a few more pages and so on, you know? And, but anything that's beyond this area, if you think of it like you know a table and you're in the middle of your comfort zone, I need to stretch out a little, to go a little to the edge of the table. As soon as I go beyond, I'm in what I call the panic zone. When you're in panic, you're like a soldier on the battlefield. Um, you're like someone in, uh, who just experienced an accident or there's an earthquake or whatever. You are in survival mode. And in survival mode, nothing gets done. You just somehow make it through. So guess where you create your dreams and where you create the biggest learning in your life? In which of these three zones? Well, definitely not in the comfort zone. Exactly. <laughs> and certainly not in the panic zone. So you're doing it. Right. Okay. Yeah, in the stretch. Right. Zone because so the whole point is to figure out with it be, be, it could become friends with how your brain works and say, okay, so if I'm staying out of my comfort zone, but I learn how to not go into panic, but I learn how to challenge myself enough, then this amazing miracle happens where all of a sudden, as I continue to stretch myself, you know what happens? My comfort zone actually grows. What used to be stretchy and stressful for me before now becomes comfortable. It becomes my new normal. That's what we call breakthrough in life, okay? All of a sudden, you look like this, you have a wider zone. You can, oh, wow. you can operate comfortably in a wider field. So that's me who used to be scared of the idea, oh my God, I'm gonna sit in front of you know, someone that, whose name you would recognize, you know, A-list, uh, super, super people who, who intimidate me, um, and I have to speak you know, and make sense in front of them and for an hour answer all my questions if I'm trying to sell. Now there's nobody who can intimidate me because I've done this stretching over and over. It doesn't right. stress me out. So, and but that's, that's, probably why, that's probably why actors like to, you know, a film actor or TV like, like to go to Broadway or like to, mm -hmm. because they, they like to do something, you know, take a role they've never done before. Exactly. Like, you know, Adam Sandler and Uncut Gems because they're always exercising that muscle of going into their stress zone and, and broadening it, right, unlike exactly. you know, yeah, unlike right, people who yeah. hang out in their comfort zone. Thank yeah, you. Right. Exactly. Yeah, of course. And thank so thank for you for uh, jumping yeah. into that, Adam. I it's appreciate about it. about figuring out these little steps, yeah, of how you can get out there daily, but without overwhelming yourself. That's all. One one thing that you guys uh, sort of mentioned that I really want to jump into is uh, we were talking a little bit about psychology earlier and how our brains are sometimes playing against our visions. And one thing that I want to land with everybody is in this psychology research, what I'm realizing is that your brain is not able to, and it doesn't want to see the future version of you as you that see your brain sees the future Christoph, the future Amari, the future Adam Davis. It sees that as a completely different person. Now within like an hour or two hours, it can be like, okay, yeah, that's me. Let's prepare. Let's provide for this person. But like, Oh brain, I want to be a Oscar winning Christoph one day. 25 years down the road, your brain is like, I don't give a damn. I don't know who the hell that is. We got like rent to pay. We got this to do. I focus on right here and right now. And your brain is going to allocate the resources 
and the creativity and the energy to provide for the you of now, right? And that's why a lot of times it's hard for us to prepare. And like, even if like our heart says, yo, I really want this 10 years down the road, your brain is not gonna give you the motivation and the energy, hence procrastination to do that thing. Is that making sense for everybody? So um, what I think is like super interesting about that and a hack, because it's not all doom and gloom, a hack for that, that me and Christoph were talking about, that's where the power of visualization and meditation comes in. When you sit with yourself and you imagine yourself like, okay, cool, I'm receiving this award right now. I can feel it in my hand. Oh, the wood is kind of splintery. Like, oh my God, is that Angelina Jolie looking at me? I think she winked, right? Like all of a sudden you really start to visualize and I, I like convince your mind that this is happening right here and right now. And that way you hack your mind to start thinking like, oh, okay, this might actually be closer than I believe. And it's going to start providing that energy, the resources and the support. I know it sounds very like woo woo and like, oh, just meditate your way to success, but it's actually extremely useful. It's actually extremely supportive. You're actually neurohacking yourself when you do those kind of things. So just wanted to throw that in there and like Chris. Absolutely. Yeah. And you just said something very valuable, Amar, because, um, you know, you, you just basically put it as before you said the thing about meditation, which is also valuable. But, um, the uh, the brain almost logically goes into procrastination. So there is a definition for procrastination, which is definitely a challenging one. There is a definition for procrastination from someone who studied the topic who said, "What if procrastination could be defined as a form of wisdom? What if procrastination was actually the wisdom of my inner?" knowing spirit to keep me from doing things that I'm not ready for. Now, I'm not saying that that's my definition and it's my overall definition, but it's an interesting thought. You guys get that? What if it's the wisdom to protect me from something I'm not ready for? What if I'm pushing hard for, you know, I'm going to do everything today. I'm going to finish this damn script that I've been working on for, for weeks and I've been pushing things off, but you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to, or, or yeah, all of you who are, I don't know, who are working on paper, students, all of that kind of stuff, right? I'm like, oh, damn it. I haven't done anything in three weeks, but tonight I'm doing it. The next 24 hours, I'm just going to take some Adderall or whatever it is. I'm going to finish this damn thing and do it. And guess what? You're going to fail. You're going to crash. It's not going to happen. But you somehow push yourself into it. So procrastination can also, in that form, actually protect you from putting yourself in panic. Because just That's like we don't know, we don't know the stupid, we, 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 we're not smart enough to actually really be able to put ourselves 20 years in the future. Why would we? Our brain protects us from that because then we would live in fantasy land and we wouldn't be able to, as you said, pay our bills and be here for our relationships and our lives and our responsibilities today, now. It's in the same way, our brain also doesn't gauge very well when in terms of time and what we're able to do in a certain amount of time. Unfortunately, we're not very well wired with that, it turns out. We're not great at understanding how much we can get done in how much time. That's what science says. So we have a tendency to, to overestimate our ability and our capacity when it comes to what we can get done. Which in summary is everybody here has the most complex amazing thing in the universe in your head which is your brain yes. and that amazingly powerful thing is also completely outdated at times <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> yeah yeah it's the best thing ever created it's amazing yeah. <laughs> um which brings me to the next little uh portion of the conversation that i want to jump into i'm not going to keep you guys uh super long but i definitely want to make sure that you get maximum value out of this conversation um, me and Christoph wanted to do a little bit of a dive into like the neuroscience of this, not keeping it too scientific, but um, giving you some awareness of exactly how the mind works so that when procrastination does come up, you have better tools and better capability to hack it. Yeah. So given that, um, the first thing I want to say is that your brain, your habits, the way that you work is conditioned and programmed by habit and reward. So I know I can see a couple of my clients are on the call right now and they know that I talk about this so much is that your life is a sum of your habits and your fight to break some of the habits, right? <laughs> Not fight, but your flow to break some of these habits. Um, and at the end of the day, you only form a habit if you are rewarded for it, if your brain gets something out of it, right? If I'm a little kid right now and I'm crying and I'm screaming and blah, 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 blah. And my mom says, oh, fine, Amari, here's some candy. 
all she's done in that moment is tell my brain like, oh, cool, when you cry and you scream and you bitch, you get candy, which feels good. We like that. So what are we gonna do next time? We gonna raise the roof, right? Like we gonna start screaming, we're gonna start crying and we're gonna make a fuss. So with procrastination, it's the same thing. We are rewarded for putting stuff off. And that might sound counterintuitive, but it's actually true. If you think about it, when you put things off, you're uh, rewarded by like, oh, now I don't have to have people judge me. Or maybe now I don't have to uh, feel like a failure. Or I don't have to be stressed out. Or now I have extra time to do X or Y or Z. There's always a reason at the bottom. There's always something that you get out of procrastinating, whether it's emotional management or you actually get something out of it, like it's time for something else. Yeah. So I'm going to let Chris uh, jump into that conversation as well. Actually, I'm going to let you talk about that a little more because I really like listening to that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, but I mean, what, what I'm going to tell you is uh, yeah, what I've discovered, I don't know if it exactly fits in there, but um, I've discovered a couple of things of the habits of very successful people because I've been blessed to be around some of the most successful and uh, I guess uh, accomplished people in the world. Um, and uh, are actually on a regular basis, I get to hang out with a lot of these people. And um, what I've noticed, one thing that I've noticed is um, for pretty much all of them, no matter what the different characteristics and everything are, is a certain depth and understanding of how to make the maximum use of time. Again, we know our brains are not always good at understanding time. Somehow a lot of these people have figured out, and I've made it my mission to figure it out more and more, of how to deepen time, how to actually stretch time. Time is a really interesting concept. We don't even know if time really exists or in, in the way that we define it. Einstein, I think, at some point said that we invented time so that it all wouldn't just happen at once. <laughs> and um, so the whole linear concept of time is, is weird anyway but our brains like to deal with it however i found out that one thing that can deepen my time that can actually stretch my time is my level of presence does that resonate for everybody so the, the more i deepen my ability to be present to every situation fully present i can actually make more out of the time that i have because obviously, you know, when they asked Bill Gates, there's this famous lesson with him, and they asked him, how did you do it? And he said, well, one thing I can tell you is I had 24 hours in my day just like everyone else. So how do I deepen and stretch my time? That's something that I find with so many of the most impressive people that I've met from, you know, people wearing crowns or having big political positions to CEOs to A-list superstars and so on. They're top athletes. When you're with them, you get this understanding that they really make the most out of five or ten minutes which other people can't cover in an hour of a conversation and another connection before um, you move on to the thing, second one yes mm -hmm. yeah because before you move on to the second one i want to jump into that so everybody talks about this concept of like presence and just be where you're at and it can sound again very woo woo and whatever and like I told you at the beginning of this call, I'm not here for the woo-woo. I'm here to make it practical. I'm here to make this actually valuable and tangible for you all, right? So like I said, a couple of the clients that I have on this call know that something that I employ when we talk about these slices, uh, like we were talking about with Adam, is, okay, cool. I'm going to write seven pages of my uh, screenplay or whatever today. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of the TIME acronym, so T-I-M-E. So T is me sitting down before this thing and saying, okay, this is going to take me an hour and a half. I of the T-I-M-E. My I is my intention. My intention is that I'm going to knock out seven pages of this thing. M is the mood. And the mood is like, uh, okay, I'm going to put on this kind of music because that's going to set me in the scene for the zone. Or mood is, uh, I'm going to put on candles. Whatever the hell it is. Whatever gets you in the mood to write. And then the E of time is to eliminate distractions. So turning off your phone, blah, 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 blah. Right? So for me, that is how you can tangibly cultivate presence, right? And like what Christoph is saying is you can actually make so much more use of your time when you actually are present to what you're doing. And a lot of times we say we're not procrastinating, but it's like, cool, I'm writing, um, I'm writing my screenplay like Adam, but I'm also like checking Instagram at the same time. Essentially, I'm still procrastinating, right? We have a time. question in the chat here. What was the T? Oh, Ruby Chase with the question. T was uh, time. How much time will this take me? 
Yeah. <laughs> the, T, <laughs> the T in time is time. I is intention. So what is my intention? What am I trying to get out of this time that I'm setting aside? M is for the mood. So whatever I need to do to make myself prepared and in the spirit, whether I need to do a meditation, a visualization, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And then E is to eliminate your distractions, turning off your phone, sending your kids to their uncle, like whatever it needs to be. Right. Awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and, and that to hook in with that, to me, what makes you more present? What creates presence? Those are things. What happens when I eliminate distractions? What happens when I meditate, when I put myself in the mood? What happens is that I step out of my head. I step out of being so consumed with myself. Pre being present to a conversation, listening, which I believe there should be a, I literally believe in schools, there should be a class called listening from elementary school going on. I really believe our world would be much better for it if we had that. Um, and true listening happens when I'm not consumed with myself, when I'm completely letting my own concept, my own agenda, my own ego go, and I really focus on you and what you have to bring. So in the same way, when I'm working, how can I, especially in creative work, which we're all in some way connected with, right? How do I allow the voices, the spirits, the whatever it is that bring me the inspiration? It's called inspiration. Spirit's right in there, right? When people ask me, where do you get your ideas from? I said, the same place you get from. There's no secret to that. You will just put your antenna out. But in order to have my antenna out, I need to get out of my own head and of my own stuff and of my own importance or whatever it is. It's the same thing in a conversation to me as it is in a communication with my work and with the inspiration that drives my work. It's presence, presence, presence. So, so, so yeah, that... I believe that also gives a little more detail to that. Right yes, on. I love it. Thank you, Dr. Silva. Um, real and then quick, the so other I, thing I found about, yes. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, so that people don't have to listen to us too much. Uh, like I said, there's a couple of clients that I have on this call. Uh, Sasha, I know, Colin, I know you didn't want me to shout you out, but Colin, Sasha, Sterling, if you guys could just give one of you, give like a quick 30 second uh, rendition of what your own experience of using the TIME acronym has been and how like, how's it affected your productivity and whatever, whatever. That way we can hear from real life examples and not just Amari and Christoph talking out of our ass. Yeah, I'll jump in. Um, it's changed the way I work uh, in a really great way. Um, I actually find, I, I'm a screenwriter and I um, also do photography and videography and for the writing that I do, it's really important that I set aside a block of time and just commit to myself that I'm not going to be checking my phone, that I'm not going to be um, engaging in other conversations. Um, and that I'm super clear on what it is that I want to accomplish. So I used to do what you suggested, which is like, think about the pages that um, I wanted to like get done. But now, um, I find it's a lot more effective for me to visualize, well, to like imagine completing a scene. And for a song, maybe it's like a chorus or, um, yeah, or if, if it's photography, for example, maybe it's retouching like five images. Um, but you're just very clear and specific so that all those, all that noise in the background of like, I have to do laundry, I have to go talk to this person, um, I have to show up for this job later. Um, all that stuff I know I'm going to get to and I'm going to be able to check my Instagram or whatever. Um, but for that time, I'm being very intentional um, about accomplishing something that is that I'm really trying to grow and manifest in my life. And so I highly recommend it. Do it. <laughs> Cool. Thank you, Sasha. I promise I did not pay him to say any of that. Uh, Chris, you were about to say something. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, hook, uh, basically get back on my, my topic of um, habits of the most successful people that I meet and continue to meet. Because the other thing that I found about almost well, pretty much everyone that I know um, that's highly successful is that they don't do it alone. Um, they all, we all, <laughs> including my, myself included, have always have a team and we always have 
someone that guides us, um, a consultant, a coach, um, a spiritual advisor, sometimes several people, but there's always someone, an accountability partner of some kind that, can, that people that are highly successful and that are highly driven continue to work with. Because again, we just covered a lot of ground in terms of what our brains naturally tend to do. So without someone in our lives continually supporting us in stepping further in, in doing this thing, you know, so that this thing happens and I keep moving out, guess what? If I don't have the person who reminds me of this, I'm going to just automatically keep always jumping right back in the middle because that's where my brain wants to be. My brain just wants, cares about me coming home safely at night into my little cave where the fire is and where a warm whatever bare skin um, and a person to cuddle up with is and some food that's not going to get me where I need to be although I love cuddling um, and so <laughs> Ruby stop <laughs> no, but, but um, yeah so that is really important to understand people talk about oh my god how do people get all of this stuff done how are they so amazing it's because they know how to delegate they know how to get a team together and they know how to say i am not everything i have someone that's actually further developed than me i lean on people i've done that for my whole career i always look for people that are further than i am and what i do and i and i seek to befriend them i seek to have them as my guides and my mentors i'll always do that i believe that and, and you'll be surprised that people that you think are at the highest level of all, they will still tell you with glowing, with their eyes glowing. I've seen it from people where you wouldn't believe it um, about the person that mentors them and that teaches them. Yes, big facts. Thank you, Christoph. Um, yeah, and if you haven't gotten the point yet, that's kind of why I created this guild thing that we're experiencing right now. <laughs> um, because for me and for the people who join late, like, the entire intention of this is because I know what the power is when we support artists. I know what the power is when an artist has um, somebody holding them accountable, not just to being productive, but to being their best self, right? Colin, I won't make you talk, but I'm gonna like gloat on you for a second. So Colin is a writer and he's one of my clients. And for 15 years, he was writing, but not publishing anything. So he was writing, but not, submitting anything to get published and when he had me and we were working together on a month-to-month -month basis like he had somebody being like yo did you finish your pages today yo did you write like is this actually high quality or are you just trying to get it done also cool you finished it are we sending it to warner brothers are we sending it to harper's collins like we're getting it done and you you get to send it to me by 7 p.m tonight right like there's a completely different game you play when you have somebody walking next to you and making sure that you're being your best self at all times and for me, for people who like maybe can't afford one-on-one -on -one coaching, that's why I wanted to create this, like a, a more group-like setting where I can not only have these kind of conversations with people that I respect and I love, like Christoph, but then like set you all up with each other. So, okay, cool. I have another artist who's trying to make shit happen, who's going to be hitting me up and texting me the same way I'm going to be hitting them up and texting them like, yo, Sasha, did you finish your screenplay today? Yo, Nico, did you finish that album or like whatever it is, right? Like there's a different level of ourselves that are accessible when we don't do shit alone. Yes. And I think that's super important and super imperative for all of us to know. Go ahead, Christoph. Absolutely, yeah. Because at the end of the day, if you don't get it done, it doesn't count, right? Yeah, otherwise it's just I a mean, there's a, fam there's a famous <laughs> writers. There's a famous thing about writers, you know, the idea of, of, of a headstone that says, here lies so-and-so who never got around to finishing that novel. I meet people every day who tell me you could write a book, but how many of us actually do that? Right. Oh, and I didn't finish gloating on Colin. So uh, after not submitting for seven years, or what, 15 years? Sorry, Colin. After not submitting for 15 years, we worked together for three months, and he ended up submitting seven different pieces to seven, more than mm -hmm. seven different uh, publishing houses. So if everybody could just give a quick round of applause to Mr. Colin. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 shout out to colin in colorado um but yeah Amazing. so for me this entire thing is an experiment this little uh get together um my intention is that we do this regularly my intention is that uh bi-weekly i will 
I myself will come in as the speaker or I'll bring in somebody like Christoph, somebody who's established and somebody that you'll respect more than me to come in and talk about their experiences on different topics. Because there's so much shit that we deal with as artists, um, whether it's like maintaining your brand or financial stability, maintaining your confidence, uh, productivity, shit like this, right? What I want to do is have the Guild be a bi-weekly conversation the first and third Monday of every month, right? Where we have an hour and a half, do a deep dive, get coaching. And then when we're not in these conversations, we support each other in a community group. So with, if you finish your album, yo, we're all coming to Nico's album party. Yo, Sasha needs people to read for his script. Cool, we got seven actors in here. We're gonna make this shit happen, right? Like the best thing for us to know is all these people, like Christoph said, that we look at and we're like, oh my God, Beyonce, you're so amazing. How did you do it all by yourself? Beyonce, if she's being honest, will be like, bro, look at these 484 people that I got right behind me that are making this shit happen with me. And there's my coach, Amari Anderson, making sure it really fucking happens, right? <laughs> and I'm part of the guild. <laughs> so that's yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. I've met her. She's, she's, really, she's actually a really sweet person. <laughs> yeah, she's yeah. terrible to coach, though. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what we're planning on doing here. Um, I'm gonna let Christoph talk because there's one other thing that I know he wants to mention, but so I don't forget what I want to do is every two weeks we have these conversations. I'll send you all an email if you do want to sign up and be a part of this shit. Um, we had like over 40 people who say they were interested in coming tonight. We have like almost 30 right now. Um, my intention is to keep it intimate. My intention is that people who are like committed to making this happen, right? Because there's no point in one person bringing down the boat. Like I want all of us to be fucking popping all of us to be fulfilled not just financially and cool clout whatever but also internally satisfied and fulfilled as artists so we can all look like Kristoff one day yeah <laughs> good luck with <laughs> that <laughs> <laughs> look, well, <laughs> as i told you at the beginning i never had a problem with procrastination what's wrong with you guys <laughs> no of course i didn't say that i had a huge problem with procrastination and I believe that it's always with us and it's just like other things that we have. We have certain things and we learn how to work with them, work through them and make it happen. And because I'm passionate about that and when I hear someone like Adam share or, or, or Nico or other people and I hear you share about, hey, this is what I want in life, this is what I'm working on. I, this, this stuff immediately makes me, it's, it's delicious for me, it's juicy. I want people to, honestly, I find nothing more, more, more fulfilling than seeing other people realize their dreams. I mean, the reason I'm in film and in television is because in my work continually, I can see others get to places that they never thought they could. Actors, uh, writers that I work with, you know, people that I mentor and so on. And I say, wow, look at them getting to new levels. And I'm so passionate about that. And I've so clearly seen how procrastination is the thing that, stops that from happening that really breaks people causes depression um and so on that, that i've really i've gotten with my mentor because i i have I myself have a mentor and a coach who's very very accomplished and very um, well known in, in, in that world and so i got together with them over the last two years and we've done some research and we've done some work on the topic of procrastination i put together a program for it which is called pro x nation and Pro X Nation is um, a program that will be held for the first time in January 18 and 19. We have a workshop going on, and that workshop will be a weekend workshop, so not the full weekend. It's about six hours every day on a Saturday and a Sunday. And I really, really highly recommend for you to come. A, you get to work with me in person, which doesn't happen very often because I don't have a lot of weekends off. Um, you and um, you will be you have the ability to a all of the stuff that we talked about truly individually because I don't let a lot of people in there. I'm going to let a maximum of maybe 50 people in there, but I'm really it's not about the numbers. It's not about um, all of that. I want to make sure that you get to really find out during those two days of what it is that you're exactly doing when you're procrastinating, how to really nip that in about and find out what's going on with you and inside of you. And then in the work with other people, figure out, so what is my best strategy in coming up with who can support me? Who can give me accountability? And you will, within that circle, actually, just like the guilt does that for, for, for many people too, in a, in a broader sense, here we're going to specifically work on 
who is the person and what is the structure that will help me create what I've always wanted to create in life. And I'm not going to let you go until you got it. Um, it's available for a crazy introductory price of $150. I don't know why the hell I'm doing this, but I'm doing it. So you get the $150 for the entire weekend because I'm passionate. I'm not trying to get rich with this. I don't need to. I really want this for people. We still have a couple of seats available. I'm sure Imari can hook you up with the links and all of that. Go for it. I just popped the link in there. Thank you, Sasha. Awesome, Sasha. Uh, you didn't. <laughs> thank you, Sasha. You didn't mention the best part is that uh, I will be there staffing, making sure y'all got. And Mari's going to be on my team. Yes. <laughs> How cool is that? He's on my staff. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Um, but at the end of the day, it's like for all of y'all, whether it's like you want to be part of the guild or you want to go to. Uh, <laughs> I almost called you Sasha. If you always want to go to Crystal's workshop, <laughs> it's not about like a sales pitch. It's at the end of the day recognizing that all this knowledge all this information really doesn't do us any good doesn't create any change in our life unless we make it experiential right unless you're working on a weekly basis with artists like yourself and being like yo i saw that you said that you were going to get that album done why the hell do you not even have one song done and all of a sudden it changes versus i know i should get the song done now you have accountability now you have structure now you have people like me who do coaching on a full-time basis you have powerful artists like christoph coming in giving you feedback making it experiential so that uh like adam was saying it's no longer a fantasy and it's no longer like oh i would like to be this artist who does this shit it's like yo i'm i do this shit this is my life <laughs> right the same way that you can be like yo i'm a accountant or i work at taco bell it's like oh i'm an artist and i'm fucking popping and it's great and it takes care of me my family and my mental emotional spiritual physical health is great and it's very possible for everybody um that's one thing I would really want everybody to get it to land with them is that this life of having your life be fulfilled by art is accessible to you. And uh, for me personally, like my own journey was that, cool, I had success in the film industry and had like hundreds of millions of views and worked with, you know, blah, 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 flex, flex, flex. But like, I was so unhappy and I was so depressed and I was like so constantly trying to prove myself because I didn't do the inner work because I didn't have a coach because I didn't have the self-awareness because I didn't have a team being like yo Amari cool you're making all this stuff but like you're also a human being as well right and this is a guild of not just artists but human beings who are here to be human as shit in the best way possible <laughs> yeah we're having think, fun. <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. um <laughs> we're, so we're going to wrap up in a second. Does anybody have any like comments, questions, concerns, blah, 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 blah. I would love to hear from y'all so that I can stop talking. Just raise your hand uh, or hold on. Let me see. Yeah. If anybody has a question or things to say, either turn your video. I just wanted to say thank you. This has been awesome. I'm a big fan of accountability and us getting together and doing these things and yeah, this is uh, this is the groundwork for 2020. So, oh yeah, yeah. soon everybody, can we go? Welcome to a new year in awesome. life. Yeah. Anybody else have some gems to drop real quick? Thank you, Ruby. Uh, no, I see a lot. Oh no, that's Carson's face. Hi, Carson. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fantastic, beautiful. Um, so everybody on this call will be getting uh, an email from your boy. Um, it's going to be great. It's going to be fantastic. Um, this whole session was recorded. So if you need to go back and reference something, I'll include a link to that video in the, oh shit. Now somebody's trying to join the meeting right now. Procrastinator. I swear to God. <laughs> God. <laughs> Welcome, Ken. They're definitely going to the workshop. <laughs> Somebody just joined the workshop. Yeah. Um, what was I saying? So yeah, I will send y'all an email with, uh, the link to this so you can reference it and you can listen to it and share it with all your little friends. Um, and it'll be also a sign-up seat if you want to be included in the guild. There will be two levels to the guild. Uh, the first will just be conversations like this. The next level will be a conversation like this with accountability partners. And the second level will have a whole bunch of different perks like an inner circle community, direct coaching from me. Um, you have access to all the previous sessions versus the people who just pay uh, the, the lower level. But it's gonna be fantastic, it's gonna be great. Uh, hit me up if you have any questions. I love y'all, I appreciate y'all. 
uh, and I love doing this shit. And I thank you, Christoph, for jumping into the party with me. It was a good time. It was fun. I'm so glad to be part of something new. And <laughs> I know you all are going to create amazing things. Yeah, and we're going to have you back. But, you know, I just, Absolutely. I just can't pay for you for every week. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right uh this has been fun y'all this is exactly what i imagined it to be this is exactly what i wanted uh thank y'all sending love and artistic inspiration and go get some shit done and stop procrastinating go appreciate y'all bye <laughs> bye love y'all yeah no sweat <laughs>